Hey Huddleston Cloud. It is Michelle Huddleston from With the Huddlestons. If you are new to my videos, welcome. So glad to have you join us. So we have designated Sunday nights as our, mm, I guess you can say like our little mommy time where we get together and we just talk about different things. I kind of picked a, um, a theme and it's let them play because a lot of you guys in our um i'm just gonna say like a virtual community we're moms of littles and a lot of us can get caught up in the systematic way of teaching our children especially being homeschool moms you know we want to make sure that we've got the perfect curriculum and that our kids are meeting all the milestones and reaching all of the developmental um, levels and stuff and we can just really overwhelm ourselves but even more we overwhelm our children because they um, they not only become our children but then they become our students and so we have to make sure that they are learning and that they are learning exactly what they're supposed to learn according to whatever you know the latest table of whatever that comes out so I have been on this um, I guess you can say journey I've been on this journey of really not so much as like de-schooling my kids but de-schooling myself um if you're not familiar part of my background actually a, a big chunk of my background is engulfed in education um, i went to school for it i've got several degrees in it i've worked in public school systems and I've worked in the early childhood education and development system um, as a lead preschool teacher, um, tutor, curriculum specialist assistant, like just all kinds of jobs all wrapped in the education field. So when I came from the brick and mortar to the homeschooling front, I came with a lot of stuff from that environment. So I've had to actually like de-school myself. And it really hit me this year because we have four children and our oldest just turned 11. And so he's on a different level, of course, than my one-year-old, two-year-old, who's about to be three, and then our four-year-old. And I'm learning as my three youngest kids develop and go through all of their stages, it's a lot different. It's a lot different just having, you know, just the one kid, you know, when Alex, when I started homeschooling him, um, Safira was still in my stomach. So we just had the one kid and, um, you know, we went from there and as time went on and we've added on all of, um, our other kids, it's kind of like, yeah, um, we're all going to be stressed out if I don't, you know, just take a step back and just see, you know, what I could change. And the biggest thing has been getting back to the heart of childhood. Um, I can remember when I was getting my degrees how play was such a big deal in the early childhood field. Um, some of you might be aware, maybe you've went to school for it. But play is a big deal in the child development centers, in preschool. You know, it's all about play. And so I started thinking like, you know what, I'm going to take the pressure off of myself and I'm going to let my kids be kids. And so that's kind of where Let Them Play, the theme of our Sunday nights has come from. And then every Sunday night we have been choosing a um, just a little topic to talk about we started off with making some sensory stuff and we talked about having fun playing in the kitchen uh, last week was playing through chores and tonight I figured we could just have a discussion about the natural ways that kids learn and I actually just got this earlier because my daughter and I were in the bathroom she had just pottied and so we washed her hands 
and we got some new hand soap and so you know she's up on the stool and we're letting her all of our kids you know are at their own stages of independence and so for her is she can get the stool she can get up there turn on the water do the soap even though she got really excited tonight and I turned for all of like 2.75 seconds for real 2.75 seconds I turned and I cut my eye back and she's just like going in and I'm like hold on sister if you're gonna pump three four then no then mommy's gonna do it but it was a learning moment a natural learning moment she knows okay so I can't get away with that next time I'm gonna have to do the one thing and get it but here's the thing earlier today she's washing her hands and so she's doing the bubbles and all this stuff and she goes mmm this smells sweet and I looked and I was like yeah it actually does smell sweet and I added on a little bit to that I was like yeah it's, it, that type of sweet is like a floral it's like a fruit I mean I said fruit it's like a fruit because the the hand stuff is pomegranate and so you know I, I gave her a little bit more but I thought about it and I was like when did she learn about something smelling sweet like I really don't recall <laughs> don't laugh at me y'all but I really don't recall sitting down with her like I have with other things you know what I mean like and saying okay let's smell these different things and let's talk about what they smell like like I don't remember doing that at all so the fact that she like out of the blue was just like this smells sweet it kind of threw me for a loop and I was like see that's what we're going to talk about tonight because while we're over here stressing out thinking like if you don't know your ABCs if you don't know your letter sounds if you're not reading by the time you're five oh my goodness something's wrong and y'all know how I hit somebody help me yes thank you for the thumbs up because I'm thinking y'all talk to me I don't know if you are Facebook and uh, comments don't like me sometimes and so you can try to say something I'm gonna say hi and maybe that would trigger all of the comments. And I hope that y'all talk to me. Because I don't want to talk to myself. So yeah. As you're coming in, say hey. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Let me know how many kids you have. How many, you know, small kids. Because we are kind of talking about the early, um, the toddler on up to, I'd say, early elementary school age. Let me know all those things so we can so we can talk. So I'm serious. I don't know when I actually taught her about the different kinds of smells and what's sour and what's sweet. So I was like, yep, we're going to talk about natural ways that kids learn because we need to know that it happens all the time. Like in those moments where we feel like oh, I didn't do school school today or you know um I don't know if my kid looked at a book today okay but I'm pretty sure baby can I get some more water my hook is in here I tried to get him on here earlier he's like no I don't want to and I'm like but babe you're around the kids you're around them just as much as I am and you have so much valuable stuff y'all he does he'll get on here one of these days his, he's got just so much valuable stuff and he's now running out of the kitchen I love you babe you too. <laughs> I love you too. At least I got that much. So, let us not forget that life is its own best lesson. When our kids um, watch us go through things, when they listen to us talk, when they um, see us just whatever, you know, they're, they're learning. You know, hey Misha. East Tennessee. Hey girl. So, okay. Came across this quote earlier that like slapped me all upside my head. I don't know if you caught the post. I'm going to go and read it to you because, um, it was a moment of confession. It really was. Um, I have for the past couple of days, usually, and this is another confession. Usually when I have a deadline for work, when there's something, typically it's when we're on the brink of releasing 
a, a new product or a new service or just, you know, something that's kind of crunch time with our business. Maybe it's filling in order because I love to get my orders out within a couple days of them coming in. But we had um, just sales through the roof on this one particular, on our Dig Life journal binders. And those are handcrafted. So in the brink of just getting all this stuff wrapped up, getting everything ready, um, I know that I've been operating out of kind of like an, I guess you could say an intense type of aura, if you will. You know, just uh, mommy's like on edge because she's trying to get all this stuff done, especially before Shabbat. And, you know, I just want to go into the weekend relaxed because Sundays are my Mondays. When Sundays come around, I am back at it. You know, I'm off. Uh, typically Friday afternoon until Sunday and then when Sunday rolls around it's my Monday so anyways came across this post so timely because I had just got through telling Brian babe me and these kids somebody's about to be hanging upside down um I even mumbled off and was like um I'm ready for them to be a little bit older can I get a, like, it's okay, girl. Like, I feel you. Help me. Because I seriously was there. I just was, you know. And like I said, I know it's because I was halfway operating out of just, you know, just crunch. But it's the truth. So, there's two. I don't know if you caught them on my page or not. But the first one was... Children are holy sandpaper. I saw that and I thought, if God cannot be more like that one did it. It says, homeschooling your children will, expo it will expose every flaw and weakness you have. And that's a good thing. You see my face. Hey, Felicia. Girl, we talking about natural ways that... Our kids learn and I'm just having a transparent moment because okay this is what I put with when I shared that picture truth bomb Wow is all I can say confession moment just earlier I was thinking about how my children have no idea what I go through mentally and emotionally as a mom some days I'm at a total loss and want to give up other days I wish them to be older just to get over these toddler days but then there are days when God shows himself through a photo like this as a simple reminder that all of these obstacles are a good thing. Because y'all, when I tell y'all, like the kids, I don't even think it's like full moon time. Earlier, I told the kids, stop jumping on the couch. Like this is not a jump zone. This is not a bounce house. And y'all have no idea, like this costs money. You break this couch, are you going to sell hot chocolate on the side of the road to get us a new one? No, you're not. Well one jump too many and Safira jumps in a way where she hits the table and one of those good old fashioned fall forward and hit this part mm-hmm y'all remember we had those as kids but when it's your kid falling off the couch hitting their chin it's like didn't I just tell like I saw it coming so speaking of natural learning what did sister girl learn she not finna jump off that couch no more like that. I bet she won't. And if she does, she's a bold little cookie. So I was just like, okay, God, just have your way up in here. And then the other one that I posted, this one, and I did put on here, I said this. Let's talk about this tonight because this also goes hand in hand with our kids naturally learning. Bear with me as I read this thing. Homeschooling parents, and this is not, you know, I know that I talk a lot about homeschooling parents. It's the season I'm in, and so I'm naturally gravitating towards all things homeschooling. But please know that if you are not homeschooling your kids, that still doesn't mean that you're not a homeschooling mom. Brian and I have talked about this before, and I think we're going to do a live somewhere in, in 2019 because that's just like two days away. But we talked about wanting to communicate with people that even though you might not be a homeschooling mom, you're still a homeschooling mom. When your kids are in your care, when they're not at school or with somebody else, 
you are in a position of influence. You're in a position of educating them and them learning from you. Like your family, your dynamic is their life. That is their number one classroom. So when I say homeschooling parents, I'm, if you're a parent, you're a parent. You know, whether you're homeschooling or not, you're a parent. But this graphic does say homeschooling parents because typically, and when I read it, you'll understand why, but it does go for us who have our kids 24-7. Okay, homeschooling parents are concerned there will be gaps in their kids' education. The question is not if they will have gaps, but what gaps there will be. As parents, we must decide which gaps we can live with, which gaps we can close later with less time and energy, and which gaps are non-negotiable. We can close a math gap later. We can close an English gap with different curriculum. But if we have a spiritual gap, all of eternity might not close that gap. And kudos to Kirk Smith for that quote and for that slap in the face, and for the confirmation that natural learning really is something that we should, in my opinion, be more focused on. At least I am. Um, the natural processes of learning for my kids. You know, like it says, there's gaps. There, there will be gaps. You know, we, we can drive ourselves crazy on trying to prevent the gaps, but instead of focusing on their, you know, being this prevention of, you know, and I don't want my kids to experience a delay in anything. Instead of looking at it like that, maybe we should be like, okay, you know what? There's going to be gaps. There, there, there just is. There's going to be gaps. Okay, got it. So which gaps are there going to be? I am willing to bet that all of our kids are going to be okay. And regardless of what gaps come when they come if we as the parents keep it together they'll be okay so let's dissect kirk's thing here because this is good stuff we're, we're still talking about the natural process and the natural play and the natural way that our kids learn so let's like let's put that into kirk's quote so, okay, we're, we're going to have gaps. Got it. Now, there's gaps that we can live with and that we can close later and some that are non-negotiable. For us, the, the spiritual gap is non-negotiable. Like, that is Brian's number one thing with the kids is if, if they're spiritually strong and they have the wisdom in life, in learning life, job well done. Job well done. So that's a non-negotiable for us. Something that I'm learning to not focus so much on are the subjects like math and reading. Now, hear me out when I say, you know, reading. Because people are like, oh my God, you don't want your kids to read before you be like, Michelle says she didn't care if her kids read or not. I'm not saying that. Hey, I think you pronounce your name Mayra. If I messed that up, I'm so sorry. Could be Myra. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining. It's okay if you're a bit late. With, no, no book. I am on, uh, with the Huddleston's Facebook page. And I was just going over two of the posts that I posted earlier. I'm looking at Kirk Smith's quote about, um, gaps in education. But the topic of tonight, we're talking about the natural ways that kids learn. Oh, Myra. Okay. Oh, I went to school with the Myra. Sure did. I won't say her last name, but yeah, I, I did. I went to school with the Myra. Okay. So the gaps that I'm okay with are like the math gap and the reading, you know, and I say reading back on back talking about reading because reading and math are the two most important things to me that my kids eventually learn because I feel like with that foundation, they can take care of the, the simple things like I, I want you to know how to balance a checkbook I want you to be able to read you know so you can get around you can just do you know whatever and speak in a pr at least a proper way or an intellectual way you know just so yes 
eventually that will cross the non-negotiable. But for a one-year-old, a two-year-old, and a four-year-old, I'm not so concerned with... You're welcome. I'm not so concerned with those types of gaps right now. You know what I mean? Because I feel like with the way that Safira earlier was like... You know, she was just like, this smells sweet. I don't recall teaching her that something smelled sweet. So that tells me that she's naturally picking up on some stuff. So if she's in the kitchen with me and we're cooking, I can use that as an opportunity to show her what the word eggs look like in a recipe or, you know, just just natural things. Cooking is a natural thing for us and so it's not something that's forced and it's something that we could use to help with reading, to help with math. You see where I'm going with it? And so those are some of the, the gaps that's just like, you know what, when it comes down to actually putting down three plus three on a paper and, and getting six as the answer, that's that's a, that's a later gap. You know, so talk to me about, let's talk about this. You know, what are some, because we're, we're talking about, he says, as parents, we must decide which gaps we can live with. So let's talk about what kind of gaps can you live with that maybe right now you're like super hardcore on, you're pressuring yourself, you're pressuring your kids and really could probably be one of those that's just like, you know what? I probably could back off because I don't know who I'm trying to keep up with right now. I don't know if I'm trying to keep up with that homeschooling family or this new statistic I read or I don't want my kid to be a statistic because we're our own worst enemy. I have a whole chapter about that in my book. You know, we are our own worst enemy and it's just all in what we're telling ourselves, what we're reading, what we're seeing. And it's just like, oh my gosh, my kid is not where this says it. So anyways, okay. And then it says, um, as parents, we must decide, okay, which gaps we can close later with less time and energy. See, right there is where Kirk is like, ding, 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 ding. You win, Kirk. Okay, you win. Because that end part with less time and energy. How much time and energy are we placing on on gaps that could be closed later, but we're pushing them right now because it's like, you need to be doing this now for what? I don't know, but this is what I feel like you need to be doing. So we're going to make sure you're doing it. Even if you're crying every day, because I'm forcing you to do this. Or if I'm turning gray faster, cause I love gray. I love my gray hair, you know, but turning gray faster because of the time and energy that we that we probably could actually be putting in something that's more enjoyable where they actually are naturally learning if my kids want to play with blocks by all means because I tell you another I'll give you another example um I was telling y'all it might not have been last Sunday but Sunday before last Euphrates is all about trains He'll take anything and, and make it a train. So we have these blocks. And what does he do with them? They're the wood blocks. The wood blocks. that They're, they're um, rectangle, small rectangle, the big rectangle. Kind of like some that you would see in a child development center. Cylinder ones and all that type of stuff. So what does he do? And they're, they come in like four or five different colors. The primary colors. So what does he do? Hey, Desiree. He puts them all in a line. All around the living room floor. He's got a train. Train, 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 train. And so I'm just watching him. Because see, my husband's good with that. He's the watcher. He's the whole, like, I want you to mess up. Because I want you to get through it. I want you to know what it's like to mess up. I want you to feel what you feel when you mess up. And then I want you to overcome it and conquer it. So he's that He's that guy. He's that parent. And I'm over here like, no, let's just not even put them in that situation. Mm -mm. So here, I'm, I'm going to fix it for you. So I've been trying to take on a little bit of my husband because I see the wisdom in that. So I'm watching him and he's building these trains and then he starts to count almost to 20 and see I remember us getting to a point when I was forcing him to count to 20 and he would like flip out at 13 
and sink down and not want to do it and start doing just all the to- all the things that toddlers do because what that it's these emotions that they don't know how to process we know what they are we're like dude get over it we're just counting to 20 come on you know because we've already conquered that we've already gotten through that but for him it's this meltdown and this breakdown because i don't want to do this right now i have counted to 13 for you this is great this is where i'd like to stop mom like by all means please can we please stop at 13 you know and i'm like no 20 we're going to 20 we're going to 20 we're going. so i watched him and he's counting He's talking about the colors just to himself. And so I'm like, yes, like, girl. So it's back to one of those things like, what gap am I going to be like, okay, it is perfectly fine that we count to 13 because that is your stopping point today, sir. I get it. Because later, what he's going to show me is that he can actually count to 20. Go figure. You know, you going know what I'm saying? Y'all probably hear my baby in the background, but he was asleep. I'm probably talking too loud. I'm going to go back and catch up on um, how much you get done daily. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, that is a big one. That is a gap that we could probably, if we're all honest with ourselves, we could probably, we could probably put that in a gap that's just like, you know what, we can live with reading a book, watching a show, and playing outside in some dirt. Like, that's a gap that that we can be okay with. I have learned from my son with autism to not force reading. He has picked up on so much and has taught himself to read a bit. I plan to work later on his... Exactly. Work later. Work later. That's good that he's actually, like, taught himself. I think, you know, I know there's different spectrums of autism, but I, I... I have to just say, you know, when it comes down to that, that I know I, there's different spectrums, but I feel like that autistic kids are not, um, th- I don't know what word to use. I just know that there are a lot that are way smarter than they're given credit for. Th- that's just, that's the best way I can put that. Uh, so much struggle spent on pushing our kids to follow our timetable. You're right, Desiree. Um, Myra, my oldest, has autism. Love the way he learns. So different, but his mind is so brilliant. Yes, I'm glad you said that, Misha, because, yep, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Just couldn't put the words together. Um, Surprises daily. The way he processes is amazing. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're incredible kids. I've worked with a few autistic kids um, in the past. I regret pushing my oldest so hard in reading. I was breaking her spirit and desire to learn, causing a rift between us and I've had to spend years repairing. Thank you for sharing that, Desiree, because that's something that, you know, if we shared more stuff like that, we could actually alleviate a lot of the stress that we put on ourselves. One, going back to what you were saying about the timetable thing, you know, now I'm all for, you know, I have my, um, I just gave my uh, email list people a free excuse me, a free, it's an IEP, individual, uh, individualized education plan, but it was kind of like a broken down one where it was just more of like a printable where you could just keep up with where your kids are at and not to push them, not to set unrealistic goals, but just to say, hey, you know what, this is what you learned this year. Um, let's, maybe put a goal or two on there, you know, maybe read five sight words or, you know, just something super realistic and something that, because here's the thing, y'all, when we put those expectations on our kids to reach a certain level, I don't think we really think about it in the, in the moment, but we put a lot of stress on ourselves. Like the moment we decide to say, okay, I want you reading, you know, and I want you doing this by this and this. Who does that really put the pressure on? Us. Because then that means that we have to make sure we're doing what we said we're going to do to get them to where they, where we want them to be. So yeah, that, that we have to really just back off. Honestly, I think all of us as parents, um, could back off on some of those things that are not so important. Like he says, 
which gaps we can close later with less time and energy and which gaps are non-negotiable because the, the time and energy that we're spending on those other two gaps, pro it should be the energy that we put on the non-negotiable ones, like the spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Their soul, the, the soul gap. Sorry for my spelling, okay? No worries, I've got kiddos jumping everywhere, fighting better. I'm so shocked that my other two were so quiet. I don't think they've made a peep since we, but. Boom, my husband's right here. He was like, get in there and spank him. Because that. No, I said you didn't hear me spank him. Oh, I did. Oops, they got spanked. Never mind. <laughs> but I tell you, though, the past few nights, they have really been testy. Like, do you think we're just putting you to bed, you know, for nothing? Like, sure, go to bed and just swim around in your sheets. No, we're not. I took a step back and stopped teaching reading for almost a year. Now at 10, she would rather read than anything else. She found a love for it all on her own. High five. Yes. Yes. To that. Absolutely. And that's so encouraging because I had originally... I had originally said that I wanted my child, Safira, reading by four. And... Part of that was fueled because I was talking and reading and all that stuff by that age. I'm sure my husband was because he was one of the, I don't know, I don't even want to get off on all that because he'll be like, stop telling people that. Now I'm going to say it since I've said it. He's, he's just been intelligent all his life. His mom said he's got one of the highest IQs she's seen on paper. No, I'm not saying the highest. The highest IQ she's ever seen on paper. Not one of, but the highest. Anyways. Oh, I love him. And then one of my friends, um, her son was reading by four. When I first met her, he had like just turned four and he was already reading. And now he's like six already wanting to do like long division and stuff. And I'm thinking like, I'm going to try not to let that, you know, get in my hamster wheel and be like, why isn't your daughter reading? She's four you know she'll be she won't be five until august but still you know it's one of those things that's just like am i really going to be okay with her not reading yes i am because when that limiting belief comes in and says you're not doing enough you need to be doing more with your kids look at that kid over there they're doing this when those things sneak in no don't let them win do not let them win. Like, I'm going to be meeting with some moms in the morning. We're doing, um, it's a homeschool planning party type of thing. And we're going to all meet in a uh, virtual meeting room type of thing to just plan out. It's it's more for accountability and more for uh, adult interaction. It's probably more for the adult interaction before accountability. But we're going to be um, meeting to do some homeschool planning and I have to be prepared mentally to not allow what I am going to see other moms doing to not affect what I'm bringing to the table to plan for my kids. Because our planning is going to look a lot different. You know, um, one mom might have 15 books ready to be like, okay, we're going to do a chapter out of this a day and we're going to... I'm not going to be that mom. You know, my 11 year old is an independent learner, right? I mean, he's been an independent learner, I think since like nine. So he has his books. He knows what to do every day and he does it. And we check in and, Hey, what are you learning today? And when he's like, Oh, you know, I'm just learning about area and, you know, geometry stuff. I'm just like, you go, you know, but he knows he can come to me if there's something that he needs actual instruction on. Um, if he needs actual, like, okay, this is how you do this. Like we do, we, you know, we have to do that at least once a week or so. But other than that, like he's straight. So I'm not going to be coming to the table. And then another thing is he's, he's more of like a, um, okay. Okay. He's more of like the, um, I want to learn about the eyeball, 
let's learn about the eyeball. And, and we're going to learn about that eyeball. And now when he went to the eye doctor with Brian a few weeks ago, he was able to uh, put into perspective what he had previously learned about the eyeball because he came home and he was like, now I understand like that one part in the eye, why it does the way it does and all this because he got to see that big poster of the eyeball that's at every optometrist's office. And so I know he's learning and he, it was one of those, hey, I want to learn about the eyeball. So tomorrow when I plan, I'm going to be planning, I should say not so planning for my younger three. And it's going to be, and that's why I have this sitting right here. Because it's going to be a lot of this stuff. Put that right there so I don't knock it over. These baskets and stuff. This is stuff that I like to give my kids. Like just different textures of stuff, different cups, different stuff with sand. Safira loves to color and paint. Sure, you know, we'll color and paint flashcards type stuff like this. And then, of course, our activity books because they're dry erase and so they can write on them and erase it and, and do it all over again. Things like this. These pieces. You know, the stuff like this is what I will be bringing to my homeschool planning with the mamas tomorrow morning. Because... I'm just not at that point where now I do have a few things for Safira because she's starting to show interest in reading and sounding out words. Before, um, let's see, we're halfway through our school year right now. Um, so back in July when we started, I was just like, okay, we're going to be doing five sight words a week. And um, this one program that I have from... Uh, this girl I know though, it, it really works. And so that's something she really likes and I love it that she likes it. So that's something that we can naturally do and that has helped. But some other stuff I was doing was just causing her to shut down. And so now that she's showing interest in the sounding out words and writing, yeah, we're having way more fun with natural things. Okay. Let's see. Agreed. I took a step back. Okay, stop teaching. I read that one. The one thing I tell all new homeschool moms is to stop stressing the outcome. They'll get it eventually, everything in its season. I wish more newbies could get that before burning bridges with their children. Mm-hmm. That's what, girl, I had, that's why I wrote that just for today's homeschooling mom and included so many personal testimonies and I actually included some other things from other homeschooling moms because it's really not that difficult. We don't have to have a degree to teach our kids. We don't have to know all of these these things to teach them like it, it's just we don't. Um, speak, thank you for this. You're welcome. The, the um, in my drawer on my desk check the the top drawer I wanted my daughter reading before kindergarten two years from now because my son was but I've had to stop I've had to step back and realize they are both different mm-hmm I will keep reading to her and yes yes because Misha you're showing her you know that hey reading can be fun and I can help you with it. I, you can read through me. You know, she's probably maybe, you know, just focused on the pictures. But her eyes are seeing. And yes, girl, you're doing just fine. Every child is so different to what one may do at four. You're exactly right. One won't grasp until seven. My almost five-year-old still struggles with certain colors and shapes. And I have to be okay with that which is a struggle for me as a former teacher for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's hard not to compare our kids to each other or other homeschoolers. Desiree, honey, ding, ding, ding. Yes, ma'am, all day long. I know it's a natural process. And, you know, we have to be okay with saying, no, I'm not going to allow that to manipulate my home dynamic, my unique family uh, dynamic. We're not going to do that. And... There is absolutely nothing wrong with your 
uh, almost five-year-old still struggling with certain colors and shapes because let me tell you how some, something else we can do it's not ignoring and it's not uh, minimizing with what I'm about to say it's just simply saying you know what I choose to look at this differently so it's not so much that maybe your five-year-old still struggles with certain colors and shapes it's just right now that's just hey that's fine it's not a struggle mm -mm. right where is it a she my almost five year old sister struggles in okay didn't say if it's a he or she i'm going to say she he i don't know if that's right you have to help me out but instead of using those words that even indicate negativity, maybe we can just, you know, change how we change how we say it. Maybe not a struggle. I don't even want to use the word setback or anything like that. It's just, um, I wish I had Anita's book in here with me. Anita Gibson. If y'all don't have her book, Starfinder, there's so many. I have a YouTube video on it because um, she was one of the first people. I Actually, she helped me kick off. My virtual talk show, which is coming back next next year. Um, and next year is just like two days away. So coming back soon. Uh, let's talk about it. And we talked about her book, Starfinder. Because something that she said in it that was just like, was like, you know, and I even have it in a blog post. I think it came out last week. We focus on the negativity sometimes so much that we forget the areas that they're actually good in. And sometimes when we shift our focus and say, you know what, um, we'll come back to this because you do this really well over here. You're, you, you do this well, let's do this. And how it just naturally raises the area that they may be struggling in. So she gave the example, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm repeating this story correctly, but she gave the example of how her son just really needed like something as simple to her, something as simple as taking out the trash was a task and a half for her son. And she was finding that he had all kinds of um, just he wasn't doing it the way she wanted him to do it basically can you make a list of these resources that we can check out later yeah yeah so she was like you know what i figured it out i needed to be clear with him every detail every detail so she began to not only just say hey did you take out the trash today it was um did you and in the moment, it might seem like you're doing the most, but it was like light bulb moment because she said she began to say, okay, did you uh, did you take the trash bag out of the trash can? Or no, no, no. Did you tie the bag up before you took it out of the trash can? Yes, mom. Did you take the bag out of the trash can? Yes, I did. Did you take the bag to the trash can outside? Did you put the top back on the trash can after you put it in there? Did you replace the bag in the trash can in the kitchen? And see, by doing that over time, she said he began to naturally take the trash out how she expected him to take it out in the first place, but she didn't communicate with him the steps, the individual steps and stuff. I don't know how we got off on all this, but I mean, it was just, oh, because we were talking about her book, Starfinder. Because for him, that was a weaker area that was a weaker you know him doing a simple chore what well, to her was a simple chore it wasn't so simple for him you know she said he was good at something else like I can't remember what it was really good at something else she didn't need to go into detail about that because he was good you know that was fine but for something else you know it was just taking that extra time or praising him and what he was good at and then doing what what she had to do which you know Sometimes that's what we don't want to do. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. Anyways, so yeah, I hope you guys, you know, were able to have your own little light bulb moments from this conversation because I, I know I sure have. And yeah, no, I don't ever, I don't ever plan what I'm really going to say. A lot of the times I just, 
I just let it flow. So um, you're welcome. Okay, so let's talk about these this list of resources really quick, uh, Myra, because I don't want to draw a blank and I don't want to make a list based off of what I think you're talking about. So as far as resources, oh, okay, I think you're I think you're talking about Anita's book being one of them. I'm already on the computer, so I'll, uh, let me go ahead and just, cause girl, once I get off this, this, I will, um, okay, just the ones I mentioned, cool. Cause as soon as I get off here, it's almost 8.45 my time. So I'll be, I'm not really that tired. The past few Sundays I've been resting my face. <laughs> That's what I call it. I would be in a position where she's like, you know, I'm a little tired, boss. I'm a little tired. I'm just resting my face before I go live. But I didn't do that this time, and I actually feel okay. So let me get Anita, let me get the link for Anita Gibson's book really quick, because that is a good one. Starfinder, every bit of amazing. Yep, got that here. So I'm going to go ahead and post that. Starfinder, yeah. Okay, Anita's book. Stop Everything's a song in our house. Everything. I will sing everything. Okay, so there's Anita's book. Um, I did mention my book. Just for Today's Homeschooling Mom. The thing about Just for Today's Homeschooling Mom is it is a built-in, it has a built-in devotional. Because that's how I write majority of my books that are like this. Because I am that type of reader. Um, when I get a book, I love space to be able to take my own notes. Especially if it's faith-based, you know, scriptural stuff. Um, I love it. So just for today's homeschooling mom is, it has a built in devotional at the end of each. Ch Alex, can you bring me my book? It's over there on top of the, not on top of the printer on my desk in the front of the silver thing. Girl, yes, we were created to praise all day long. Music helps kids remember and show enough does, honey, because my kids, I'll make up a tune right quick, and then they'll be singing it the rest of the day. Half the time, I don't even, I just be, um, okay, so I'm going to show you better than I can tell you with, the, with okay, so just for today's homeschooling mom, do a quick commercial. This is just for today's homeschooling mom, brought to you by, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so at the end of each chapter, Uh oh, I, I'm passing them all up. Okay, so at the end of each chapter, we have spiritual tools. And um, y'all know I'm all about renewing the mind, you know, transforming the mind. Because, I mean, here, we can mess ourselves up in here. And we think in all kinds of things about life. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind has... Limiting beliefs, and then it has affirmations to trump those limiting beliefs. Because what are we going to replace the limiting beliefs with? Like, what are we going to tell ourselves when it's like, I'm just, my, I, I can't, okay, so here, I'll just give you an example. Okay, if I could only get it right, I just need to fix fill in the blank. Maybe I should just do what they are doing. If I could, if only I could fill in the blank. I don't trust myself to do a good job. I'm losing trust in my ability to homeschool. Does any of those sound familiar? And if you've never thought any of those, it's good for you and don't ever because some of us have struggled with that. And then the affirmations are, I trust myself to make the right decisions. It is okay to not fix everything at the same time. I will do what is best for my family. I will trust Yahweh in his way, in his word. And what his word says, I will trust myself in our unique homeschooling journey. 
Those are the affirmations to tell yourself instead of, I don't think I'm cut out for this homeschooling thing. Or if I can only get my child to read, you know, by whatever day. No, 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 no. I will do what's best for my family. And then scripture for meditation. So then you have scripture there. And then there is a prayer at the end of each chapter. And then some journal space. And the journal space is front and back. And then we start a new chapter. And then throughout, there's also, like I said, little tidbits from other moms that I uh, gathered. Like this one mom. And the way I wrote this book is kind of neat because there's one section that's kind of, it deals with the life side of homeschooling. And then there's what I call the sides. And that is like the extra stuff with homeschooling, like, homeschooling styles we talk about the homeschooling styles in here um we talk about the multiple struggle when you're homeschooling multiple kids then we've got paging miss secretary you already know this about organization and stuff in different different styles to organization and then we've got um forget the first day that's the bomb i hate to toot my own horn but i cried after i wrote that chapter i ain't even playing i don't know where it came from but I did. I cried. So uh, this is what one mom says. She says, most people call me a classical unschooler. So, you know, just little stuff like that throughout the book. Because, you know, we're not in this thing alone. We are not in this thing alone. Another mom said, loving my daughter is not enough. Choosing a good path is not enough. Praying is not enough. Even solely putting my trust in God is not enough. Faith not only requires believing but in many cases, it requires thoughts, vision, and action. That was one of the quotes. I was just like, psh, 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 psh. so good. I ended the chapter on that quote because I thought, oh my gosh, like where is she going with this? And then at the end, I thought, oh my goodness, she was genius. Thank you, Faith. And her name was Faith. I thought, thank you. But um, yeah, so if y'all want to pick this up. It's it's a good, I mean, it, and it's a whisper of encouragement when you need it most. That's the little tagline. So anyways, I put that on there. Um, I cannot think of any other resource. If there was something else I mentioned, just drop it down in the comments and I'll find it for you. Other than that, I am out of here, y'all. Of course, I always enjoy my time with you. I try not to be so long-winded. I can't help it. Once we get to talking good and y'all talk to me like we did tonight, I could just go all night long. Thank you, Myra. I try, girl. I have no idea what we're going to talk about next Sunday. Most likely something that happened throughout the week. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about this Sunday. So, But if you have ideas, uh, don't hesitate to um, message them to me. PM, DM, all those M's. Email, all that air stuff. But until next time, we're not stressing. We're not worrying about the um, unnecessary gaps we are going to shift our focus on the things that matter most and what better time we're about to roll into a new year and i know i usually don't try to get caught up in the whole like um okay as of january 1st i'm going to wake up and i'm gonna have my coffee hot my kids are going to wake up at eight o'clock and we're gonna be schooling by no we're not doing all that okay let's keep it real okay yes 2019 is coming but it doesn't mean that your whole life has to shift it just means it's a new year of the Gregorian calendar because in our household, we've got two calendars. There's the Hebraic calendar and the Gregorian calendar it can kind of get confusing, but whatever. So we just happen to be coming up on a new Gregorian year. And yeah, we can we can set a few realistic goals. It doesn't have to be a whole, you know, whopping change, something that's going to send everybody to the loony bin. Nothing like that, Okay. But it is a good time where we can tackle at least one thing. Let's start with the way we think of stuff. Let's start with, you know, I think this is simple. I think we can do this. Like, choose a gap. Or let's talk, Let's look at the three gaps. And let's take what our life looks like now within all those three gaps. And just, like checkers, maybe this needs to come over here and that jump over that to come back here. Or like chess, just take that piece completely out and set it over here. I'm a visual person, so in my mind, this is for real going on right now. 
chest, you know, move that up, move this back, you know, that one piece that makes an L shape. Thank you, Dad, for teaching me how to play chess. You know, and, and you know, we're not trying to take the queen completely out right now. We just pop some pieces around, okay? Um, yeah, Myra, yeah, well, we can do that together. Just, um, let's, let's make sure we're friends on Facebook or not. Well, cause sometimes I can't send people messages unless we're friends. I don't, I don't get Facebook sometimes I'm telling. So let's make, let's link up. Let's make sure we're friends and we could just shoot each other private messages or do some, uh, Facebook video message or something. We'll get together. Cause yep, we can talk about that. But y'all, other than that, I am out of here. So y'all have a blessed week and I'll see y'all later.